In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your first AI agent within OpenAI's Agent Builder. This is a very, very simple agent. And what we're going to do here is we're going to pretend that we've got a skincare business and we're going to create a chat bot which we can embed on our website, which users can then speak to and chat with. You could change this for whatever you want. This is just my example. So in this example, I've uploaded a couple of documents, including one about this moisturizer that I made up and I'm gonna ask it what the ingredients are. So if I come over to the chat bot and I say, um, hey, what ingredients are in the Hydra Boost, which is that product, it should go over and it's gonna look at those files, including that one that I just showed you, and it's gonna look at all of the ingredients and it's gonna come back and it's gonna say, here are the three ingredients, aloe vera, juba juba, hyaluric acid, and green tea extract, uh, which is exactly what we have put here. Obviously, you can make yours do whatever you want, but let's have a look at how you build this very basic agent within OpenAI's Agent Builder. Okay, so to start, we're going to want to go to Google and search for platform.openai.com. And we're going to come to a, a site that looks like this. Now, I am already signed in because I already have an account. If you don't have an account, it will ask you to create one. It will look a little bit like this or perhaps like this. You'll see some options on the left-hand side. This is basically the developer side of OpenAI, where you can do a load of different things. But what we're interested in is the agent builder on the left-hand side. This is the agent builder. When you first go there, it will look a little bit different to mine, as I already have a few workflows and uh, drafts uh, in action. But you're going to see this Create button. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to create a new workflow. So in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to create a workflow where um, we're going to pretend we have a business which then sells like skincare, and we are going to create a chatbot which we can install on our website that users can speak to and they can learn about um, our business. Now, we could make this more complicated by connecting it up to like a Shopify MCP. So users on that chatbot can return items or they can uh, get information about items or they can see where their order is. We're not going to do that for now. We're just going to implement a RAG system, which is retrieval augmented generation, which essentially means when we ask uh, AI a question, it's not just going to pull the information from its data set. It's going to pull the information from information that we give it. So I've created five PDFs which I'll show you in a second, which basically give information about the business. I've got like frequently asked questions. I've got shipping details. I've got uh, information about products. So all the information is going to be pulled from those specific documents. So all the information is going to be relative to the business. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got here. This is the canvas section. So we are going to be able to see here all of the different nodes. These are nodes here, which we can connect in order to make this work. At the bottom, we've got a few bits of, uh, a few settings on how we can move this about, or if we want the select tool, so we can select multiple steps. We then got uh, undo and redo. In the top right, we've got the publish button. When you're ready to publish this, you can publish it. We've got the preview, which is where you test it. We then got the code, which is how you embed this into a website. We've got evaluation, uh, which is how you run tests on this agent to make sure that it conforms to certain standards and tests that you want to set up. And we then have a few other settings like duplicate and rename. On the left-hand side is where we've got our nodes. Now, I believe there are going to be more nodes released, um, assuming this is a tool which OpenAI continues to support. So these are our nodes over here. And we're only going to use a couple in this example because we're just creating a basic one. But we've essentially got our agent, and our agent here is going to be um, the kind of like the bread and butter, the thing or the node that we're going to be using in the majority of cases to get this to work. In fact, let me show you how this works um, it, right now. So if I go preview and say, hello, I'm going to send it off. And we're going to see that this blue outline shows that this bit is running here. And we can see the reasoning. Um, and we're going to go through that in just a second. And we get a response. It says, hi, how can I help you today? Now, if I ask it, um, can you tell me what makes this business um, eco-friendly? Now, it knows nothing about a business. It doesn't know that it's meant to be a chatbot for a business. It doesn't have any access to my frequently asked questions. So it doesn't know anything. So I'm going to send it off and it's going to say, well, I don't understand. I don't understand you know, what business um, or it's going to make something up. Let's see what it says. Uh, I'm happy to help. Could you share the business name or link? So there you go. It's saying basically, uh, I don't know. Okay. So let's go through this and see what we need to create. So we are, let's get rid of this to start with. Before we add in the agent, we're going to add in a guardrail. So I'm not going to go through all of these nodes here. I'm just going to go through one or two, which you need to create your first agent. So 
I've dropped in the guardrails node and connect it to the start node. Now, what the guardrails node does is it essentially uh, moderates the text input that the user inputs in a means that you can protect your information, the business's information, from malicious attempts um, to try and get information out of your business, which perhaps you don't want to give people. So perhaps um, if you connect up to your Shopify uh, orders, you don't want to give people access to certain orders if it's not their order, right? Or um, you don't want to, you know, have a chat bot talking about, let's say, like se sexually explicit themes on your website because you might say that's not appropriate for your business. So here is where you can set those things up. So there are certain things we can set up. There's the personally identified information, which essentially means that someone cannot input this information. And you can select which information you don't want them to be able to select. So their credit card information, um, their uh, bank account number in the US or in the UK, like their national insurance number. And you can see in the different countries, we've got different information. And if we select this, this will mean that this will not continue if someone inputs, let's say, like their credit card number as I've got selected. That's the personally identifiable information section. I'm going to turn that off in this scenario. There's then the moderation section. And this is what I was talking about with like uh, themes or words. So you can turn off like sexually explicit, explicit information so that it will not allow the chatbot to talk about those things. So I can select this and I can select this. In fact, I'm gonna select all categories because if this was for a business use case, I don't want it to talk about any of that sort of stuff. So we're gonna add that in, and I'm going to enable that. We're then gonna enable the jailbreaking setting too. Jailbreaking is essentially um, where the user will try and get the model to do something it's not supposed to do, like expose the system prompt, or essentially interact with your model or your uh, chatbot in a way that you're, you don't want them to. So jailbreaking will allow that to not happen, right? It will say that if um, if someone is trying to jailbreak your model or if they're trying to speak to the model in a way that's not appropriate, it's going to go down this fail path here. And if it does go down the fail path, we want to end this chat. So we're going to put an end. However, assuming that they're not being inappropriate, we can allow them to chat with our model. So we're going to create a new node here, click on it, and I'm going to click on agent. Now, as I said, agent is where like, most of this happens. What we think of as ChatGPT is kind of like an agent. It's where we speak to AI and we get a response. Now, what we can do here is we can describe to the agent what the instructions should be, so how it should respond. This is where we want to uh, insert information like you are an assistant of this business. You are a chatbot inserted on the website which can assist with these things. You should always speak to a user like this. You should never say this, et cetera, et cetera. Now, a quite nice feature they've included is this button here where you can generate a prompt. So you don't even have to generate this. AI can generate the prompt, which is a little bit like AI inception because you're getting AI to describe how your AI agent should work, which works, but it's kind of like funny to think about. Okay, so I'm going to get AI to create a prompt. So I'm going to say, this is a customer support bot that goes on my skincare's skincare products uh, website. The business is called, uh, what should I call it? Sustainer Skin. There we go. You have access to documents about the business and its products. Okay, I'm gonna click create just by clicking enter and it's gonna take a second. And then as you can see here, it's gonna generate a prompt with AI to tell the AI agent how it should work. Uh, we're gonna rename this and we're gonna say uh, chatbot uh, agent. And there we go, you can see it's being renamed here. Now there is a lot more funky stuff we can do, um, but in this example, we're gonna keep it nice and simple. So here we can see um, AI has created this prompt and it's quite in depth as we can see here. Um, you're saying before giving any answer, you should reason step by step, it's giving an example of how it should respond. Um, we've got the output format. Um, yeah, there we go. Not bad prompt. I would probably add in stuff here saying, you know, always be polite and things like that. Um, but yeah, that's fine. That's going to do for now. You can play around with this and create whatever prompt in here you want to create. And as you interact with your model, this is the main place that you want to come to change how it responds to you. Okay. So we're going to click save. Okay, so if we now go on preview and I type in, um, hi there, 
then we're going to see that the guardrails is running. And as you can see, it stepped through guardrails and said, yep, this is fine. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't violate any of the rules that we set out in the guardrails node. And it went through to the agent here. And then the reply is, hi there, welcome to Sustain the Skin. How can I help you today? Now, interesting, it is given reasoning here. This is not what we want. So um, I can go into here, let me uh, close this. And if I open this up, we're going to see that um, in this example, it's given reasoning. We do not want this. Okay, so to change this, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type here, um, remove the reasoning uh, mentions in the prompt. So we're still going to use the reasoning model, but we want to remove all of the like segmentation of the reasoning in the output. We don't want the output to be like, here's my reasoning, here's my output. We just want it to be, here is the output. So I've told it to change that section and it's hopefully going to do that. And now we should see a better result. I'm going to talk about these settings in just a minute, but let's see it working first before we go on to all of these settings here. Okay, so that's created a new prompt. Now, if we go over to preview and say, hello, hopefully we should see that it's got rid of that like reasoning step. Okay, so we can see it is reasoning, but the output now does not have that like uh, reasoning section. And you can see, hi there, welcome to Sustainer Skin. How can I help you today? Now I can say, um, what makes your business sustainable? And it won't know because I haven't actually given it any information about my business yet besides the name. So it's going to come up with just some like made up stuff. However, we're going to fix that in just a second. So it says, great question. I don't have um, official sustainability details available here. Fine, let's fix that. Okay, so we're going to close the preview and come in here. Let's go through these settings. And these settings are really important uh, for affecting how your agent works. So first of all, we're going to say um, include chat history. This essentially means the chat bot can remember the previous conversations or the, the previous messages in the same conversation. We then can select the model. We can select from a load of different models and we can have reasoning models here as well as just the standard models as well. Um, and if you know about ChatGPT5 or GPT-5, you'll know that GPT-5 also includes reasoning. But if you don't want reasoning, you want something cheaper, you can go on like 4.1, for example. Um, they're also a little bit faster. Yeah, you can choose whichever one you want, including some of the legacy ones, such as 3.5 Turbo. Then you can have the reasoning effect, and you can have that uh, low, medium, high, or minimal. You do not want it minimal, otherwise your access to tools is going to be limited. Let's talk about tools. So if we click on this plus thing here, we can see we can connect to a load of different tools. We can connect to MCP server, file search, web search, code interpreter, uh, and some local functions or custom functions as well. We're going to come back to this because we're going to use this in a second. We've then got the output format, so we can have text or JSON. JSON is going to be useful um, if you are like running a classification agent. We're not going to talk about that in this video. Um, we've then got the widget as well, so using OpenAI's new chat kit and the widgets in that, which are kind of cool. Um, we then got some other things such as the velocity of it, uh, the summary. If you're unaware of what these are, you can simply hover over this and it's going to tell you exactly what it is. We've then got other information, which I am going to turn off the show search sources, just because that when we um, have this chat, I want to keep it as clean as possible. Uh, and then we want to write to conversation history because we're going to want every message to be remembered so we can actually have a proper conversation. Okay, so going back to the tools, we want to give um, this agent information about our business so it knows about our business. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to click on file search. Now, if you've already got a vector store within OpenAI, you can just select it. But if not, what you can do is just upload files here. So I have created a number of uh, PDFs and I'm going to come over to my downloads and I'm going to select all of those PDFs. I've got uh, five. Talking about different things from like frequently asked questions to loyalty program and everything like that. I've dragged and dropped them in and then I go uh, attach. And that very simply now gives that agent information to all of those things. So before I run it, let me just show you one example. So if I go to uh, frequently asked questions, we can see that this is very basic. I've got AI to generate it, obviously. And I've included information such as what makes your product sustainable it says we use 100% recycled packaging. Okay, so we should be able to ask the question, what makes you recyclable? And it will know this time. Okay, so back over in Agent Builder, if we have a look at tools, we can now see we've got a vector store connected. So if we preview this now and say, what makes you sustainable? Send that off. Now it will have information. It does have those frequently asked questions and it will be able to answer me. In fact, we might be able to see that it's searching the files and then it's gonna give me a response. 
So if we go, it's reasoning, and then it comes back and says, this is what makes us sustainable. Uh, we use 100% recycled packaging, um, and also you know, their returns and renew policy, and giving back. So some other information I've also included in those other documents that I've uploaded. So there we can see, I've created an agent which can speak to information about my business in this format here, and I can then put this on my website super easily so that people can interact with uh, this agent that I've created in like a couple of minutes. So let's get one more question. So one of the things that I uploaded is the shipping policy, and it says uh, domestic shipping is free for, do for orders over $50. So let me go in here and say, uh, do you offer free shipping? And it's going to go off, it's going to think about it, and it's going to come back with an answer, hopefully saying, uh, yes, we do, if your, dollar, if your order is over $50. And obviously, you can put in whatever information you want into that tool. Oops, within here. Oh, no, have I just exited it? Oh, no, it's still there. Um, there we go. Yes, domestic shipping is free on orders over $50. So you can put any information you want about your business within this, uh, let's open it up, the tools in the vector store, so you can create an agent that knows specifically about your business. There we go. This is a video on how you can create your first agent within OpenAI's Agent Builder. It's a very simple agent, but one that you can implement very quickly within your business to actually build something that's useful and which you can use within your business to start improving your business or clients' businesses or whatever you want to do. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please do drop it a like, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.